You are tired at last of this old world, O oh, shepherd, Eiffel Tower. Your flock of bridges bleats at the morning. You have had enough of life in this Greek and Roman antiquity. Even the automobiles seem ancient. Religion alone has remained entirely new, like hangers at an airfield. The most modern European is you, Pope Pius X, against whom shame sealed the confessionals. You read prospectuses, catalogues, and posters which shout aloud, here is poetry in the morning. And for prose, there are newspapers. There are volumes for 25 centimes, full of detective stories, portraits of the famous, and a thousand assorted titles. This morning, I saw a pretty street, whose name I have forgotten. Shining and clean it was at the sun's bugle. Executives and workers and lovely secretaries pass from Monday morning to Saturday evening, four times a day. A siren wails three times in the morning and a surly bell barks around noon. Lettering on signs and walls, announcements and billboards shriek like parrots. I love the charm of this industrial street, located in Paris somewhere, between the Rue Ormonde Thierville and the Avenue des Ternes. Here is a young street, and you are once again a little child. Your mother dresses you in blue and white. You are very pious. And with your oldest friend, Rune Dalise, at nine o'clock, when the gas is blue, you come secretly down to the dormitory and pray the whole night in the college chapel. Eternal and adorable, profound as amethyst, the flaming glory of Christ burns forever. The beautiful lily we all cultivate the red-headed torch, no wind can blow out. The pale and ruddy sun of a sorrowful mother. It is a tree, thick with prayer. It is a six-pointed star. It is Christ who soars in the sky, better than any aviator. Christ, the pupil of the eye. 20th pupil of the centuries, he knows how. Angels hover around the lonely aerialist, flutter around the aeroplane until it lands at last with its wings unfolded. Then the sky fills with millions of swallows. Ibis, flamingos and marabou arrive from Africa. The great rook celebrated by storytellers and poets, the eagle rushes in from the horizon, giving a great cry. From America comes the tiny hummingbird, and from China, the long supple fees, which only have one wing, and fly in tandem. Escorted by the lyrebird and the occulated peacock, the dove arrives, immaculate spirit. Now you walk through Paris, alone in the crowd. Herds of bellowing buses roll by, and the agony of love tightens your throat, as if you would never be loved again. You are ashamed, catching yourself in prayer. If you were living in the olden times, you would join a monastery. You ridicule yourself, and your laughter bursts like hellfire, the sparks of your laughter gild the depths of your life. Your life is a picture hung in a somber museum that sometimes 
you go to look at closely. Today, you walk through Paris and the women are blood-stained. I would prefer not to remember how it was at beauty's decline. The love from which I suffer is a painful sickness and I am ill from hearing happy words. The image which possesses you makes you survive in sleeplessness and anguish. Now you are on the shore of the Mediterranean, under lemon trees which blossom all year. With your friends you take a boat ride, one from Nice, one from Monton, and two from Telby. In fear we look down at the octopodes on the bottom. You are in the garden of an inn on the outskirts of Prague. You feel completely happy. A rose is on the table. Instead of writing your story in prose, you watch a grub sleeping at its heart. You go slowly backwards in your life, climbing up to the Hrachin and listening in taverns to the singing of Czech songs. Here you are in Marseille, amid the watermelons. Here you are in Koblensk, at the Hotel of the Giant. Here you are in Rome sitting under a Japanese medlar tree. Here you are in Amsterdam with a girl who is both pretty and now she is ugly. She is to marry a student from Leiden. There are rooms to rent in Latin Cubacula Lacanda. I remember I stayed three days there once and as many at Gouda. You are in Paris at the juge d'instruction, like a criminal, you're placed under arrest. You have made sorrowful and happy trips before noticing that the world lies and grows old. You suffered from love at 20 and 30. I have lived like a fool and wasted my time. You no longer dare to look at your hands. At every moment, I want to burst out sobbing for you and for her, for everything I love that has frightened you. With tear-filled eyes, you look at those poor immigrants. They believe in God and pray their children will be nursed. They fill the waiting room of the Gare Saint-Lazare. They have faith in their star like the Magi, and hope to make money in Argentina, then go back to their countries, having made their fortune. A family carries a red quilt, as one carries one's heart. That quilt and our dreams are both unreal. Some of them will stay and find lodging. In hovels on the Rue de Rousier, or on the Rue des Escoff. You are standing at the counter, having cheap coffee with the rest of the riffraff. At night, you are in a big restaurant. These women still have their worries. All of them have made their lovers suffer. She is the daughter of a policeman on the Isle of Jersey. Her hands, which I have seen, are hard and chapped. I have immense pity for the scars on her belly. You are alone, and the morning is almost here. You drink this burning liqueur like your life, your life which you drink like an eau de vie. Wanting to walk home on foot, you walk towards Otui, sleep amongst your fetishes from Oceania and Guinea. They are all Christ in another form and of another faith, having the obscure hopes of an inferior Christ. Adieu, adieu, this son of severed neck.